one time. And we have Velocities of Music tonight to start our set of ten that we're gonna film tonight. This is like the best set Tom and I have ever done, or at least in a long time. Yeah. Um, we're, the first album is an album that was just released not too long ago by the Dodos. Their little album, uh, No Color. Um, they've, now, the last Dodos album, which I, if you're viewing this at our website down below, you'll see our review of Visitor, which at the time that we filmed it was a request. Mm -hmm. um, no Color is actually two albums later, and it's a 2011 release, obviously. Um, and, and is quite different than... Um, uh, than visitor in composition, but not really in in, in song in style, you know. Yeah. So so Tom, what are your what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, you you put it great there. I mean, when I first started listening to this album, I was like, I am not surprised just at the, at the sound of it mm -hmm. because it's still got that really fast moving acoustic guitar that just dominates the sound. The spastic drumming that relies a lot on percussive rim clicks right. more than more than anything else, right. honestly. And that's a staple of Dodo's sound, and, and they put it to best use here. Right. Um, but at first, I honestly didn't really like it too much because this is nine songs. This, the track lengths, on average, are a little longer. There's still a couple three-minute ones, but, um, you know, they, they at least knew to, to keep it at nine tracks right. when the songs are going to get up into the five- or six-minute right. range on average. But the thing is... The stylistic tendencies, the things I just described, are pretty much present on every song. You don't really get much of a break from it, which at first really bothered me. Um, but then as I continued to listen to it on third, maybe fourth listen, when I got to know the songwriting better, because the songwriting is so spastic and, and grows so much and develops so much through these longer tracks, that it, it was hard to attach to and understand at first. But once I did, mm -hmm. it was like... Wow, these are just nine very well-written songs. Right. So in comparison to Visitor, I feel like the high points aren't quite as high. I would say that the, the best part, the best tracks on Visitor mm -hmm. are probably better than the best tracks here. But this is so much more consistent, so much more compact and focused. And I just love hearing that this band, it seems like they feel so much more comfortable in doing what they do, uh, mm -hmm. that they were able to make this, mm -hmm. you know exactly how they wanted. Yeah, and I completely agree with everything you just said. And, and that was one of the first things I noticed. And I remember before the album came out, actually being on Twitter and, and people tweeting about how nine tracks, nine tracks, that's unheard of. I mean, um, and, and then when, when actually I listened to these nine tracks, I realized um, after a couple listens that what they're doing is they've actually matured quite a bit as mm -hmm. songwriters and they're keeping the same stylistic things. But um, because they're able to, because they've grown, they're able to let these songs switch between structures and flow in between them and allow them to kind of open up and bloom and come from a starting point to an ending point and the whole thing's kind of just this growing experience almost kind of like a more advanced version of like what I would call a live structure a song that you know climaxes in live form that mm -hmm. a lot of live bands use um, but but I, that was something I was pretty impressed with. The other thing I noticed on this is that there's lots of strings involved. You know, there's that lead distorted guitar on top oh, of yeah. everything. The distortion guitar is a great mm -hmm. touch, and you mm -hmm. didn't get that as much on Dodo's other other work. Right. And here, it, just the emphasis that it brings right. to the part where parts where it is present mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. And you gotta love the instrumentation that Dodo's brings to the table. I mean, there's not very many indie artists that can really pack that much um, high quality and, and talent of uh, talent level in their instrumentation is the Dodos. I mean, I really don't, that's one of my favorite things about right. it because as being an indie freak, I mean, I don't get that very often unless yeah. I listen to metal music, which is a big style change. But <laughs> one thing that I did have a gripe about this album is it's not inherently catchy. And I don't really feel like albums should be inherently catchy, but I do think that that at least once on every album that you listen to, the, the artist in some way, shape, or form needs to come and reach their hands out of your earbud headphones and go, ah! I'm serious about what I'm doing to you. And, and I never feel like the Dodos really do that here. It's just kind of, it's all, you have to work for it. You have to work to really find the qualities about it that you appreciate. And while I like that, I always want just one time where I'm just like, oh, sold. Yeah. And, and you know what I think that problem is? And this is my biggest mm -hmm. gripe about it. So maybe this will explain some of that right. for you. Um, but what I found is that on this album, the vocals, great. The melodies, really well written. Actually, a lot of them remind me of Animal Collective. Mm -hmm. Seriously, if you listen to this album, you could imagine Panda Bear or A.B. Terror singing them just on... Just in the vocals. Yes, right. just in the vocals. It's, it's like the vocals are like Animal Collective style written melodies with a completely different background. Mm -hmm. But anyways, vocals, great. Instrumentals, great. Yet, the harmony between them mm -hmm. is somewhat off-balance. Sometimes, right. I mean, I find that 
when the instrument when the instruments are doing a lot, mm -hmm. the vocals have trouble shining, and when the vo and when the vocals shine is when the instruments aren't really doing much. So it's like they're not quite able to make them blend together right. perfectly, but still, it, it, it's kind of like. Oh, those vocals are awesome. Oh, now here's an awesome instrumental part where the vocals aren't really quite as good. Like, they, they always kind of complement each other and supplement each other, but don't always reach their maximum potential. And that's a really a minor complaint for it, me. It, I mean, it really because is. Because the yeah. songwriting is just so good, and, and the, the sounds that are presented are just so much fun. I had such a good time listening to this, and I felt mm -hmm. like towards the end of the album, it actually got more endearing, which I, I enjoy endearing dodos rather than the, the fun, um, you know, uh, red and purple dodos. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I had a good time with this album. I'm sitting at an 85, Tito. I am also going 85. Well, that's a pretty even score from us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's pretty good. We highly recommend that you guys check it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And tell us what you think. I mean, what do you? Where do you sit with the Dodos on No Color? Is this is this album colorful enough for you, or is it is it too anti visitor or anti old Dodos for you to really like it? Leave us a comment at www.velocitiesandmusic.com or youtube.com/slash velocitiesandmusic. I'm Jake. I'm Tom, and we are VIMTV Moving Music Critique Forward.